What is going on, young kings and queens? Because according to my YouTube analytics, 2% of my audience is female. Today, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to ace your online classes and get that sweet, sweet coveted 4.0 GPA, or at least come close to it. Now, I know, I get it. You're probably watching this video because you're a college student, you're stuck at home, your classes are online, and it just sucks. There's nothing to do, you're socially deprived. I get it, okay? For those of you that don't know, my name is Randall, and I'm a senior at USC studying computer science and business. I had a 4.2 GPA in high school, a 3.9 in community college, and let's just say my GPA has taken a bit of a hit ever since I transferred to USC, but we're working on it. When planning this video, I also consulted the advice of some of my friends who go to USC and Berkeley who are a bit more academically inclined. Their majors range from computer science, like myself, to pre-med, and some of them literally have a 4.0 GPA. Today, I'm gonna give you the summary of my advice as well as theirs, all put together in one video. With that being said, let's get to the first tip. Tip number one, you gotta wake up early in the morning. Now, if you're a night owl and you're watching this, you're probably about to close this video, but just hear me out. I used to be a huge night owl myself. In fact, some nights I would sleep around four or 5 a.m. and wake up at two. However, because of my summer internship, I had morning meetings at 8 a.m. So I have fixed my sleep schedule. After a few weeks of slowly adjusting, I was waking up at 6.30 a.m. and I was going to sleep at 10. And if you told me I was doing this a few months ago, I'd say you're insane. Now, if you're in your teens, you might need to sleep in a little later because of biology, but I still believe in you. Dr. K, a psychiatrist who went from a 2.5 GPA to going to Harvard Medical School, explains in one of his videos that waking up early in the morning was a major key to his success and that our brains have varying activity levels throughout the day. When you first wake up, your activity levels in your brain look something like this. But later in the day, towards the afternoon and evening, it looks something like this, where the curves are higher. And according to research, when your curves are higher, it's a lot harder to retain information. Therefore, he concludes that for the majority of the population, it is most optimal to study earlier in the morning. In fact, Dr. K says that in medical school, he would wake up at 4.30 a.m. and get all of his work done in the morning. And I can definitely relate to this. I don't do 4.30, but when I wake up at 6.30 a.m., I go on my morning walk, I get my cup of coffee in, and I just feel locked in. I can easily grind out a coding assignment, an essay, and it's done before 12 p.m. Now, going to sleep earlier isn't going to magically change your life or add more hours to your day. Assuming you sleep eight hours per day, you have 16 hours of waking hours. So all we're really doing here is shifting the hours when you're awake earlier in the day so you can be more productive. Tip number two, you gotta invest in a sick environment to learn in. When I found out that classes were probably gonna be online for the next six months to a year, I bought an affordable external monitor. I added some lights to my room that are easier on the eyes. I basically outfitted my entire room to make it a more comfortable learning environment. Since you're gonna be in your room all day, what I would advise is take a learning environment that you really enjoy, whether it be the library or a cafe, and try to emulate it. This means showering daily and dressing up so you don't look like a slob. These are all psychological hacks that will make you feel more productive and on point for the day. Tip number three, go outside and get some exercise. Invest in a home gym. If you don't have the money, just buy a few resistance bands and some pair left. You can do tons of things with that. Go on a five mile walk. Do something to get you out of your room and to go outside. As a competitive powerlifter myself, working out is central to my well-being. just getting the endorphins flowing. If you wanna start lifting and maybe doing bodyweight exercises but you don't know where to start, check out my chest and tricep bodyweight exercise. No equipment needed. Link in the description of this video. If you guys want more bodyweight workout videos, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make more. Tip number four is the big three system. They use this at my internship and it's definitely helped my productivity. Every night, physically write down on a piece of paper three things you wanna get done the next day. Don't type it out on your phone. The research shows that when you write something down physically, you're more likely to commit to it. Doing this ensures that you don't do what I call a zero day, where you just sit around and doing nothing. Even on the weekends, you're always up to something. Before going to sleep every night, write three tasks you wanna get done the next day. These tasks don't have to be super elaborate. For example, my big three the other day was going to a dentist appointment, 
finishing up some schoolwork and drafting this video. It doesn't have to be super complicated. The big three is a great system in order to create sub goals in order to reach your long-term semester goals. For example, if one of my semester goals is getting straight A's, one of my big three tasks could be studying some more or doing some homework. And finally, tip number five is in regards to online test taking. In my opinion, online tests are way more nerve wracking than in-person tests because for some exams, as soon as you hit that submit button, you can see your score. And for me, that just makes me super nervous. Now, if we're being honest here, in my opinion, I think that most people cheat on online exams. They had a huge problem with this at Berkeley, and I think it's going to get worse. The law requires that I tell you to not cheat. Jokes aside, please do not cheat on exams, guys. It's really not worth it getting kicked out of a school you've worked so hard in order to attend for what, like 10 points higher on the midterm. Most online exams are either proctored where they have some type of software so they can monitor what you're doing, or they just make it open book. And for my school, it's mostly open book. However, to my experience, open book exams are significantly more difficult than normal exams because they make the questions in such a way that you can't Google it and they have a strict time limit that makes it so it's hard to look up everything. There's really two types of exams. There's pure memorization based ones and application ones. In terms of memorization, a lot of this includes pre-med, business classes, etc., where you really just have to have all the terms on Quizlet and just grind it out that way. In terms of application, a lot of STEM classes are like this way. For application exams, it's not necessarily about memorizing anything, it's about recognizing a pattern that all of the problems have and applying it to a different problem. For example, in my algorithms midterm, I literally had like 10 examples of other algorithms that I had on my study guide, which helped me succeed in the class. If you found this video helpful or you gained anything from it, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Most of the videos on this channel are related to fitness, personal development, and productivity like this. So if you wanna see more content, hit that subscribe button. With that being said, thank you for watching this video. I have tons of homework that I've been putting off. I'm about to do it right now. I'm sure you guys have tons of work. And remember, improvise, adapt, overcome. Peace. No, no, I could not give up. No.